obviously the Russian military proved itself to be vastly less capable than a lot of people in the West believed. One year into this war, what are the principal lessons that NATO has taken away from Russia's fighting capacity? And what do you think that means going forward? It's clear that we have seen uh, on the one side the remarkable capacity of the Ukrainian people and military and leadership to basically uh, just move to a heroic uh, resistance and, and, and capacity to, to mobilize the energy of the nation. I would say we're not that surprised on the Ukrainian side because we've been training Ukrainians since 2014, since the illegal invasion of Crimea. And Ukrainians are also very good, other than being very brave, because they have adopted already NATO standards, command and control. You see this kind of agility at the local command. On the Russian side, uh, we don't see uh, much of lessons learned in terms of the weakness of the post-Soviet era doctrine and also a very, very uh, stiff and rigid uh, vertical of command and control. But we also see, and this is why we say, don't underestimate Russia. As overestimating Russia was a mistake, underestimating Russia could also be a mistake. They're still a big country. They can mobilize people. Uh, they, uh, they have, let's say, a le relative immunity to uh, loss of lives uh, because of the regime they, they have. So we are, we are really now uh, bracing for uh, uh, a very significant and violent uh, new phase of the war with the offensive uh, starting and with the Ukrainians preparing their own counteroffensive, which is something that, uh, that they do. Now, you mentioned that the Ukrainians are now uh, fighting and training at NATO level standards. The Ukrainians are being invited into the European Union. No one was going to do that before the war. There wasn't a process to bring Ukraine into NATO before the war. It was basically a stalled process. Do you now see that changing? So nations, allies, and partners are doing the lethal aid. Uh, NATO is doing the non-lethal aid. We continue to help them with interoperability, with education on anti-drone and things like that. The process of enlargement of NATO, historically, in the last 30 years, has been a policy of open door. And of course, Ukrainians um, and President Zelensky and some of the allies argue that we should engage with Ukraine on an accelerated path towards membership. I have to say that today there is no consensus on, on this one. So I think what we should do is to help uh, Ukraine win the war and then we'll look into the broader security arrangements that we'll need. We applaud the fact that the EU is moving forward with Ukraine. That's a very good thing because it's also part of anchoring them in the uh, European and transatlantic families of nation. And it's, it's, it's up to, to Ukraine, it's up to us to decide when and if uh, NATO membership would, ev would be eventually granted. For the time being, uh, the number one focus for us is to help them win the war. And we applaud the fact that the EU is giving them uh, a European perspective, which is helping them uh, you know, anchor themselves to the West.